Orale, Wolfpack, and welcome to some more Bosnian Reacts 2, Geography Now, Mexico this time. Okay, this one should be, this one should be good, man. I, lo I love me some Mexican food. Those freaking like tacos and burritos and just, just the chili, the, the jalapenos, the, the, everything. In Mexico, when it comes to cuisine, you get a 10 out of 10 out of me from, from a, coming from a Bosnian. But, um... Yeah, the history is great. Uh, the Aztec Empire is once once the seat of uh, the largest city in the world, uh, of Tenochtitlan. There was the Mayans, of course. Uh, great place. Uh, otherwise, the most populated uh, place in uh, the Americas before the arrivals of the of the Europeans. And uh, a lot of that is due to the fact that um, uh, the, the the highland regions of uh, Mexico were um, a perfect place because uh, the if you're not on the highlands of uh, Mexico, usually it's either like uh, too cold, like the temperate zones of the of the Americas, or too hot in the humid zones of the Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean. It's way too humid, but if you're in the highlands, it's just right, the perfect temperature for agriculture, for corn, for growing maize and stuff, and um, so it was uh, the perfect place for the creation of civilizations at the time. So anyway, uh, Mexico. Paul, can you explain more? Ah, finalmente hemos llegado al episodio de Mexico. I forgot my sombrero. No esto sin un de also, this is the seventh episode today. A mi amigo Cesar de Puerto Vallarta. Hola, buenas tardes a todos. Cesar, si tuvieras que decir una cosa de México para abrir este episodio, ¿cuál sería? Pues México es un país místico, colorido, lleno de cultura y tradiciones. México va mucho más allá que el mariachi y el tequila solamente. Eh, pronto les contaremos. Bueno. Oh, I actually yeah, understood all of that. Oh, yeah, I went to college in Texas. So. Oh, I also learned Spanish in uh, college alongside French. It came with French, so I learned Spanish as well. Everyone, I'm your host, Barbs. And Easiest I'm language, by the way. I'm American. Caesar's Mexican. We're neighbors. I'm excited. You excited? Yes, I'm very excited for this episode. You know, I've been following uh, geography now since like the BC countries. So this is something I've been waiting for for a long time now. Oh, by the way, I follow geography now ever since the A countries. I'm the OG here. <laughs> Hey, we stopped doing sponsored brands on country episodes, but this time we'll break that rule because Caesar can hook you up in Puerto Vallarta. Caesar, tell them what they need to know. Yes, well, visit discoverpbr.com. Check it out. Tours, transportation, transport. Looks like I'm gonna smack my face in a in tree. All right, comenzamos. Sí, bienvenidos a México. Gracias. Named after the Mexica people from ancient Aztec times, Mexico is a powerhouse on the world stage. And it's hard to imagine how the entire Latin world, let alone the Western Hemisphere, would operate without it. First of all, Mexico is located on I, the I think southern Trump part would of the North like American it if it, continent, if it wasn't straddling there. <laughs> the Pacific Ocean, Gulf of California, and the Gulf of Mexico, bordered by the U.S. to the north and Guatemala and Belize to the southeast. The country is divided into 32 federal entities, 31 states, one of which is called Mexico, and the capital city of Mexico City. Oh, and Mexico City is technically sinking about 10 to 20 centimeters a year because it was built on a lake. Anyway, That's with a greater a metropolitan bit. population of five years. million, Mexico City is a the meter. largest city and oldest capital city in the entire Western Hemisphere and in itself has about the same GDP and economy as the entire country of Peru. After Mexico City, though, the next Impressive. largest cities are Guadalajara in Jalisco and Monterrey in Nuevo León. And if you come here, you will most likely fly to one of the busiest airports. The capitals, Mexico City International, then the second place, place is, is actually huge. Cancun, then Guadalajara and Monterrey Internationals. Yeah, we Americans love Cancun, and we love going there all the time. And we do too. Just clean up <laughs> next time, okay? No promises. Today, Mexico has no territorial disputes. They did once with France over Clipperton Island, but that got settled. Otherwise, the border with the U.S., yeah, we know, we know what you're thinking, but hear me out, it actually does have some quirky anomalies. Yeah. For example, on the border with Tijuana, there is a friendship park where you can chat and shake hands with locals of both sides through a fence that goes all the way into the Pacific. Further east in California, two towns split by the border kind of trolled each other. One named itself <laughs> Mexicali and the other side Calexico. And in Naco, Arizona, the local residents have a cross-border volleyball I was game just about to say that, but no, I waited one second. Everything. Yes, there are certain <laughs> 
sections that are more barricaded and strict Those on the crossings. Those who are new on my channel but besides the complicated nature understand. behind these issues, there's a lot more to it than most media outlets portray. Speaking of territorial anomalies... In the southernmost state of Mexico, Chiapas has some interesting towns that operate under a system called usos y costumbres, which means something like autonomous customary law. The people, mostly of indigenous descent, govern their own internal affairs, and the government just kind of lets them do their own thing without interference. It sounds kind of scary, <laughs> but today it's actually kind of a dark fascination that has drawn in a ton of tourists. And finally, let's just get it over with. Just like the how wall. we discussed in the Italy oh. episode, everybody knows about it. It's nothing new. To a varying degree of power and disputable oh, boundaries, yes, certain areas of Mexico do still kind of fall under cartel influence. It's a very strange system run by underground individuals that kind of meshes itself into normalcy with everyday citizens. There are syndicates like the Cartel of Sinaloa in the northwest, the Zetas in the northeast, the Familia Michoacana in the center of the country, and the Jalisco Nueva Generacion in the west. Caesar, I'll the let you explain this. Today, it's very hard to estimate how many people are still involved and how much money is coming out since numbers are always changing, especially after the war was declared on the cartels by the government. Well, here's the thing when it comes to cartels and uh, drug trafficking. Now, Mexico, of course, has the perfect climate for it. And uh, being that the U.S. is just north of it, uh, it also has the largest um, trading partner, if you know what I mean. So... Now, uh, when it comes to selling drugs, uh, simply the uh, the profit margins are so great that uh, it's hard to get not get people, uh, you know, into that industry because to make to make like a kilogram of uh, cocaine and the profit you get out of um, you know selling that cocaine is so big. It's, it only costs like I don't know. It's like maybe let's see for like a four thousand dollars worth of cocaine, you know, and to actually you know. Uh, create that cocaine it would only cost you like four hundred dollars and uh you for to selling it you it would get if you sold it you would actually make four thousand dollars so that means a three thousand six hundred dollar profit margin the profit margin is huge and people are just you just can't not get them uh you just can't like get rid of them because uh if you get rid of them, somebody else is going to take over for them. There's going to be a void, and somebody's going to fill the void. The profit margins are just simply too large, and unfortunately, it carries on to this day. Uh, luckily, <laughs> Europe is in like a temperate region, so technically, there's not really that much. Well, there is, but not nearly as much as uh, what's going on in, in Latin America, which has the perfect climate for said uh, you know, cocaine. What government in 2006 by President Calderon. But for what it's worth, the situation is still being dealt with today. That's Most Mexicans can agree that this operation largely failed. A large portion of the violence in Mexico is still caused by disputes between cartels for territory. Thank you, Caesar. Well, I'm glad we got that out of the way because now we can lighten up a bit and talk about the almost infinite number of beautiful, notable spots Mexico has to offer. Some cool man-made landmarks might include places like... The Basilica de Guadalupe in Mexico City. UNAM, the oldest university in North America. The castle of Chapultepec. The catacombs at Templo Expiatorio. Biblioteca Vasconcelos. The tunnels of Puebla. The Plaza That's de Toros, creepy. Mexico. The bronze sculptures of Puerto Vallarta. And if you're in for some creepy stuff, the Casa de los Lamentos in Guanajuato. The torture Museum of Hacienda del Cochero. The Mummy Museum in Guanajuato. That creepy doll island nope. of Las Muñecas. And every so there. often, you might come across a Malverde altar. He's the patron saint of drug cartels. They have a patron saint for drug cartels. <laughs> but best for last, there are hundreds. <laughs> Hundreds no. <laughs> of Mesoamerican pyramids and sites. Some are possibly yet to be discovered hidden in the jungles, but the most famous ones probably being Cholula, which is the largest monument ever constructed according to the Guinness World Records. Monte Alban, Teotihuacan, the Pyramid of the Sun and the Moon. And one of the new seven wonders of the world, mm -hmm. the Mayan Pyramid of Chichen Itza. Keep in mind, we said man made. I know a lot of you might be wondering why didn't they talk about all the cool Aliens. natural sites like the cenote, sinos, or the volcanoes and oh. canyons? Well, <laughs> Natural made. That stuff won't be lost I thought it was in the alien next made. section. <laughs> Huh? Yeah. Mexico's I'm land is kind of like a piñata, colorful and full of surprises. Dude, a piñata? You really rushed this part of the script, didn't you? 
Yes, I did. First of all, the country is located on the west yeah, edge where the North American plate meets the Pacific plate, making them part of the larger ring of fire. The country is made up of three main mountain chains. The Sierra Madre Occidental, which has the largest lake, the Lake of Chapala in Jalisco. The Sierra Madre Oriental, which has the highest mountain peak or Pico de Orizaba. And Sierra Madre del Sur, which effectively surrounds the large Mexican plateau in the middle. A narrow flat valley lies between the Chiapas Mountains, which then swings up to the flat humid Yucatan to the southeast. Oh, yeah, the the arid Baja Peninsula to the west. At the bottom of the Baja plateau California lies the Trans Mexican Volcanic Belt, where most of the, the Americans seismic got the and good volcanic part. activity lies. The country has about 44 volcanoes. The most violent one is considered to be the Popocatépetl, which is less than 70 kilometers away from Ciudad de México. There's also the world's smallest volcano, Cuexcomate, in Puebla. Kind of a bad place to build a city. Tall. No, what a cute little force of destruction. Oh. Now, unfortunately, because there are 1,000 meters above sea level and there's no really navigable water waterways connecting the large uh, populated cities of the central Mexican plateau to the sea. It wasn't until uh, uh, our railroad connected Veracruz to uh, uh, Mexico, to the Mexican, Mexico City, that really trade started to take off. And um, yeah, because, uh, because they lost many wars to the Americans, you know, the Mexican-American War, the Americans took the good uh, geography and left Mexico with the bad geography, which is why the Americans are now wealthier and the Mexicans less so, unfortunately. Because Mexico is really just made out of, as you can see, uh, mountains, deserts, and jungles. If, and if you know anything about those three, it means uh, economic development is quite difficult. As a matter of fact, as Peter Tsien, the one of the greatest... Uh, geopolitical uh, analysts and strategists in the world said Mexico technically shouldn't really exist because of its geography. Really, it, it's only, you know, be, started to become wealthy because of the United States, trade with the United States, and, uh, you know, trading oil with the United States, and so forth. Yeah, so that's one one thing <clears throat> to keep in, keep, keep in mind about Mexico. Uh, other than that, uh, yeah. Let's oh, that's continue. nothing. A volcano once randomly erupted out of a dude's farm in 1943 in Michoacan. It grew over a thousand feet tall. Whoa! The Rio Grande River, which makes part of the border Sorry, shared what? with Texas, is the country's longest river. However, the longest non-shared river navigable? in, the in Mexico so. <laughs> would be the Nazas Aguanabas. Is it navigable? Along the coast it are doesn't flatter, matter. green plains. Basically, the north part is rockier and drier with landmarks like the Barrancas del Cobre Canyon and the Sonoma Desert with the massive crater pocketed Tecolote lava fields, whereas the south part is humid and lush with biosphere reserves and rainforests harboring thousands of animal species. <laughs> Speaking of which, Mexico ranks as the fourth most biodiverse country in the planet. 10 to 12 percent of the world's biodiversity. Oh, and bugs! There's a monarch okay, butterfly no century at Pazcuaro. And the firefly forest in Tlaxcala, as well as the national animal, the golden eagle, and the most iconic dog breed, the chihuahua, the smallest <laughs> dog in the world, and the nearly hairless Choloscuincle, or Cholo dog. Remember we saw those dogs? Cholo. Like, you, uh, Caesar, and then, like, uh, yeah, bones. that was like my second favorite part of the whole show. Um, and what was your first favorite part? <laughs> the part where you introduced Esclava to me. And then remember I got a little tipsy and then we played poker and then uh, I won and then I almost fell down and... It's funny though because Mexico <laughs> also has a ton of like secret hidden natural land formations. There's that strange 153 kilometer long underground river in the Yucatan. The Sotano de las Golondrinas cool. in San Luis Potosí, which is the largest... There's also a place in uh, Mexico where you have an underwater river yeah, that's right you heard me right underwater river he's probably gonna mention it in one second watch this There's cave shaft in the world the giant crystals in the caves of Nike. Oh, there's even the islas marietas which has a hidden beach inside a hole in the island you almost brought me there but we couldn't go in yeah unfortunately the weather conditions didn't permit it but still visit discoverpvr.com yeah, yeah yeah i'll come back and visit someday Wait, okay did you come yeah sure catch what are these, goggles? Yeah, you can swim there from Long Beach. <laughs> Resource-wise, Mexico oh, is the that world's was a largest burn. producer of avocados, silver. They introduced tons of new foods that would make their way across the globe, namely the big four, corn, chiles, chocolate, and tomatoes. We would Good not have them. pizza if it wasn't for Mexico. Let that sink in. Oh, and dear Mexico, thank you for inventing tajin and chamoy. My life was empty before this discovery. Food-wise, there's too much to cover. And sriracha sauce. Generally speaking, there are seven regions I haven't of tried it, but... 
In the I Yucatan Peninsula, they love the anato seeds. They have Mayan dishes like pokchuk. In the south, the tlayudas are very popular. And the chapulines. <laughs> Remember, Ken, we tried those and they were good, right? Uh, I'm sorry, what? You're fired. Anyway. In the Baja California, <laughs> the there are plenty of fish dishes and other seafood. The Bajio is very popular for their guacamayas. In the north, they love cabrito is very popular in Monterrey. And they also have a big Tex-Mex influence. In the west, we eat pozole, birria, and we also invented tequila. In the center of Mexico, there's a lot of tortas, mole, and chile yeah, poblano. Economy-wise, Mexico is the 15th largest in the world in nominal terms and 11th by purchasing power. And they are busy. The World Trade Organization and OECD has ranked Mexico as the hardest working Good country in the world. On average, they work over 40 hey, hours a week. That's it? You ever been with the boss? Dude, that actually <laughs> seems pretty low. Yeah, to I'd, be I'd be with the Mexican. Main exports <laughs> of the country include things like automobiles, electronics. They are the largest flat screen television exporter in the world as of 2017. <gasps> we covered a lot. Okay, I think that's most of it. Landscape, animals, resources, food, economy. Okay, yeah. Should we talk about Mexican people now? Yeah, why not? Next section, go. You know, it's kind of complicated because there's three different kinds of titles for Mexican. First of all, you have the Mexicano, which means it's a person from Mexico. The Mexiquense is a person from the state of Mexico. And the Mexiqueño, or as we call them, Chilangos, is a person from the capital, Mexico City. So, yeah. Take I'll call them that. gringos. Because the they are gringos for me. gringos for me. million people and it's the largest Spanish-speaking country and largest economy in the Latin world. It's a little difficult take to get exact Spain. numbers because there are a lot of opinions Argentina. on race Ooh. in Mexico. Did I call the official census does not <laughs> technically collect data on ethnicity, but overall it is said that somewhere around two-thirds of the country identifies as Mexican mestizo, about 21% identify as predominantly Amerindian, whereas 7% identify as straight-up Amerindian. The remainder is made up of other groups, mostly white European Mexicans, while a small group of Asians like Lebanese, Chinese, Japanese, and Koreans exist, alongside Afro-Mexicans, which make up about 1.2% of the population. We use the Mexican peso as our currency, and we use type A and B American style plug outlets and we drive on the right side of the road. All the countries speak Spanish. However, technically it isn't an official language. The country recognizes 68 other indigenous languages. These tribes each have their own unique story and history that goes back thousands hey, of so years before colonialism as depicted by petroglyphs, codexes, and Mesoamerican carvings. They had unique traits and traditions. The Aztecs were known for having a thriving economy yet had brutal human sacrifice rituals. The Mayans were Gotta really keep good the population at math and had a check. unique system of seeing time in an endless cycle pattern Remember 2012? linear and today tribes still go on carrying ancient traditions everything from the Raramuri or Tarahumara known as the running tribe who can go over 200 miles in two days with sandals the voladores de papantla upside down hanging spinning musicians of various central tribes like the Otomi there's even indigenous festivals held every year in Oaxaca called Gelaguetza at around 82% the majority of the country identifies as belonging to the Catholic faith and Catholicism plays a huge and slightly interesting fusion role in Mexican society. Catholicism in Mexico is unique because it has kind of its own story. Every Mexican knows about the Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe Church. It all started by a vision of the Virgin Mary from this guy. Today, native tradition and Catholicism kind of go hand in hand in Mexico. The biggest example probably being the Day of the Dead or the Dia de mm -hmm. los Muertos. No other Catholic community does this besides Mexicans. Many scholars claim to trace the ofrenda and dead ancestor honoring tradition to the Aztec festival dedicated to the goddess of the underworld, Mictec Akiwatl, and stuff like that. You see a lot of <laughs> Are you sure that's how that's crosses, right? but there's always like a touch of that, like, you know, pre-colonial Mexican magic added in there, right, Caesar? It is. It's exactly right. Sport-wise, soccer, or football, is, of course, widely popular. However, Good not team. in every National region. Team. And many sports are uniquely iconic to Mexico, such as the charreria, which is a kind of like a rodeo, and, of course, we have the lucha libre. In fact, Mexico Very has mysterio. 150 pre-Hispanic games, some still play today each with the risk of dying from such <laughs> as a pelota pure pecha which is like a Why fire hockey played at night or pok the oh, yeah. four kilogram heavy rubber ball thing that you have to hit with your hips and uh, you know put it through a stone hoop can you imagine hitting anything on your body with a four kilogram solid rubber ball it's like whoa I can't believe you guys do that Mexican history extends millennia prior to any colony I believe the loser would actually like get sacrificed or something 
and it would take forever to cover it all, but in the quickest way we can condense it, Olmecas. Teotihuacan, Toltecas, and Mexicas. The Mayans in the Yucatan Peninsula. The Spanish arrive. You can kind of guess where that went. Colonization, oh, wow. having the Spanish in Mexico for 300 years. The people all start mixing. Mestizos are born. Independence in 1810, led by this guy. Empire, led by this Austrian prince guy. He gets killed. French tried to invade. Yeah, that didn't work out. Benito Juarez, good president. Porfirio <laughs> Diaz, guy. good president at the beginning, but eventually became a dictator. Civil War, although Mexicans usually call it the Mexican Revolution. Lázaro Cárdenas, the PRI, lost for the first time in over 70 years. Then Mexico's first left-wing president was elected in, and despite geopolitical turmoil, the economy actually still stays relatively steady and doesn't spike or dip, so that's good. And here we are today. Some notable people of Mexico or of Mexican descent may include historical figures like Moctezuma and Cuauhtémoc and Sor Juana Inés de la Cruz, José María Morelos, Josefa Oriste Dominguez, Emiliano Zapata, Pancho Villa, nice athletes <laughs> like Oscar de la Hoya, Rafa Marquez and Hugo Sanchez soccer players. Singers like Antonio Aguilar, Jorge Negrete, Pedro Infante, Vicente Fernandez, Luis Miguel. Does everybody Juan just Gabriel. wear a Oh, and if you ask sombrero. any like American Mexican, they all love Selena. Actors like Dolores del Rio, Maria Felix, Roberto Gomez Bolaños. And even though she's not Mexican, Lupita Nyong'o was born in Mexico. And they, you guys love her, right? We do. Yeah. <laughs> Diego Luna, Eugenio Derbez, Salma Hayek, Kael Garcia Bernal. Hey, of course, everybody knows Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera. Alejandro Nobody González knows. Iñárritu, Alfonso Cuarón, and Guillermo del Toro. Nobel Prize winners Alfonso Garcia Robles, Octavio Paz, and Mario Molina. Some other notable people may include Carlos Canseco and Carlos Simhelu, whose entire net worth was about 7% of Mexico's GDP at one point. Yeah, he had a lot of business in other countries in Latin America and the world. And speaking of relations with other countries. <laughs> So Zona Mexico friends. is quite the social butterfly. The monarch social butterfly from Michoacan. First of all, in Asia, the Philippines are another former Spanish colony, and they're kind of like the interesting random Asian cousin that shows up that you didn't realize you had. They generally get along, just not in boxing. Japan <laughs> was the first Asian country to come in contact with Latin America, and today they can travel visa-free. Japan has opened Good up guy, factories Japan. in Mexico and was the first country to respond after the recent earthquake, and Mexico was the first to send aid after the recent tsunami. In Latin America, most Mexicans might say the countries of the Pacific Alliance, Colombia, Chile, and Peru. These countries have not only had a tied history under Spanish rule and do great business with each other, but they also piggyback off of each other's cultures and they love watching Mexican TV shows and movies. Mexicans love visiting these places. It's almost like they're just visiting extended family. In regards to Spain, all the colonial animosity has died down, fortunately. We're cool now with Spanish people and they love visiting Mexico. Like we mentioned, in the Canada episode, Mexicans have been flocking to Canada in recent years after the visa requirements were lifted. And the Canadian government actually encourages immigration to help assist the workforce. Now we reach the U.S. I know, I know, you've heard the headlines. It seems kind of complicated, but if we look at the overall scope of diplomacy, despite any political hindrances, the U.S. Well, the U.S. really wants to build a wall, not really for uh, Mexican immigrants anymore, because the Mexicans are not really that going that much into the United States illegally anymore. Anymore, at least uh, a lot of Mexicans look towards Mexico City uh, for you know to for social m mobility they don't really need to go to the United States to work as janitors anymore but it's actually the people of Central America that traverse through uh, Mexico that make it to the uh, American border and that's they're the ones that are trying to get in and the Americans trying to keep out by building a wall of course but uh, the instead, the United States came up with the, uh, the, uh, the, the is trying to come up with the new asylum rule that makes sure that every asylum seeker first res registers in the in the country they c come in first before they go into the United States to like seek asylum. So they would have to technically seek asylum in like Mexico or whatever other Central American country they are traversing through, and, and only then they can a apply for asylum in the United States. And Mexico always because building seem to a wall would be bond that still survives. too long. The U.S. has somewhere around 11 million Mexicans living in it today, which makes up the largest migrant group out of all immigrants. About 80% of Mexico's exports go to the U.S., and the U.S. makes up about half of Mexico's imports. They cooperate very closely in international affairs, usually backing up similar Western values that the U.S. stands by. And overall, no matter how crazy things get, they can't help but be there for each other in the end. 
In conclusion, Caesar, what do you think you would say about Mexico? Well, it's almost as if the people of Mexico kind of laugh at the face of destruction. We have volcanoes, earthquakes, drama, but we colorfully play and dance with death. It doesn't bother us. If anything, ironically, Damn. it fuels us with even more life. Very well said. Stay tuned. Now I'm Micronesia, scared of Mexicans. <laughs> is coming up next. Viva Mexico! Viva Mexico, I agree. Anyway, what what episode is this? Is this the seventh episode today? Oh my god, it's three more to go. I don't know if I can handle it, but guys. Hey everybody, welcome back to Flag Slash Fan Friday. Hope you like really the Mexico episode. This is the part where I usually talk really about hard. things that didn't quite make it into the video or where I fixed up some mistakes. First of all, I misspelled Kahlo for Frida Kahlo and the F for Fox should have been capitalized. But otherwise, in the history section, I forgot to mention two important things. Mexico actually had two empires, not just one. The first one was led by this guy and it only lasted like two years and they were like, nope, we don't want this. And there was also the Mexican-American War and that's kind of how Texas became its own country. Never that's forget a whole other the story. <laughs> Originally, we talked a lot more about corn in the video but I just had to cut it out like popcorn was invented in Mexico they found it in archaeological sites we didn't even talk about tamales I wanted to talk more about how oh, they hot chile on like <laughs> sweet things raspaditos are so good I forgot to mention how the largest indigenous languages are Nahuatl which is an Aztec language and Yucatec Maya obviously Mayan after a court ruling in 1957 Mexico has a strange rule where you can kind of technically pay your taxes in artwork if it's good the committee has to approve of it there's a city in Mexico where they speak Venetian Italian tequila is made from the agave plant and it was invented in the town of tequila and subsequently tabasco was invented in the town of tabasco i didn't even mention about the meteor cool. of yucatan there was a whole part i had to cut out where caesar did a that killed off the dinosaurs by the way accents of all of the regions of mexico pues en el norte pues generalmente hablan un poquito más golpeado no pues en el centro los chilangos pues dicen que no tienen acento but it kind of went on for too long and i realized like most of my subscribers don't speak spanish so they might not be able to relate to that and there's a lot of mexican american celebrities ah. Is, but Inglésias. I didn't quite mention a lot of them in the Enrique, famous people the section comedian. because there's already so many Mexican Mexican celebrities and famous people. If I mentioned all of them, it would just go on and on and on. So anyway, that's a lot. Uh, let's just move on to the flag. Without further ado. <laughs> Dude, doing Man, the Mexico episode tired. made me really want to go back to Mexico. I was this close to going to that cool, like, hidden beach inside the whole of Islas Mayas. Oh, those, are, those that might be new to the channel, I'm, this is the seventh episode I'm doing today. So I'm doing ten episodes uh, today. And otherwise, uh, yeah, just an FYI. There was like a storm the day I was supposed to go there. Wow. Eh, it'll happen someday, hopefully. Anyway, the flag. The flag of Mexico is a tricolor banner with three vertical bands of green, white, and red. In the center of the flag lies the coat of arms, or the emblem of Mexico. We'll save this part for later. Article 3 of the flag law in Mexico's constitution does not give an official symbolic meaning and for either of the colors. Blood, However, it's generally accepted that the green stands for hope, the white stands for union or purity, and the red stands for... Oh, it does. Good. <laughs> That's pretty epic. With the Once chihuahuas on Ken the for making that Aztec temples. Appreciation, Ken. I will give you the opportunity to buy part of the new stock of Geography Now notepads and buttons from GeographyNow.com. Um, don't I work for you, though? Can, can I get it for free? I'm going to pretend I didn't just hear you say that. Anyway, <laughs> Mr. Krabs. <laughs> He'd probably Obviously, sell his soul for 62 Spanish, cents. They were under the Spanish Viceroy and Spanish New Spain flags. Originally, their first flags after independence hey, were like this. They had like diagonal bands with stars. It wasn't until 1821 that the eagle was added and then various variations came about throughout the years. During Maximilian's empire, they used this. It didn't last very long. And finally, the one we have today. Now, the emblem. The emblem is based off of it's the Aztec metal. legend for Tenochtitlan, which is now Mexico City. City, which was also the center of the Aztec Empire. As the legend goes, the Aztecs were looking for a place to build their city, and supposedly they heard from the gods to look for a place where they would find an eagle sitting on a cactus while devouring a serpent. They finally found one, but unfortunately it was on top of a lake. So they were like, fine, we're just going to build our city <laughs> on the lake. Over time, the image or also it's a nice came place to, to build the concept city. of good triumphing over evil. But yeah, it was all kind of based off of the legend of Tenochtitlan. All right, so that's just about it. Uh, you know what time it is. Geography. The end of the episode. Okay, whew, man, I could use some tamales right now. Man, I'm getting kind of hungry. But there's three three episodes left, and we're done for the done for today. Then I can go eat some Mexican tacos. By the way, uh, I can just tell my mom to make those because she actually knows how to make them. She's awesome. But uh, enough of that. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode.